going on guys welcome back to another video today as promised we have the part two for the rgb glow effect that i made a video on a couple of weeks ago this one's going to get a little bit more in depth it's still going to share a lot of the similar steps that we showed in this rainbow glow effect so if you want a more beginner video i would start with this one but all in all today is still very easy we're going to start here with an after effects i love this effect because you can manipulate so many different parts of your scene from your subject to your background to whatever's behind your subject as well you can take the steps i'm showing you and just kind of add your own flair to it as always if you guys are new here consider subscribing to join the community. Leave a like if you do enjoy. It helps me a huge amount with the YouTube algorithm. Comment below what you'd like to see next. So we're going to click to create a new composition here. I'll name that tutorial and we'll drag in this footage that I'm using. If you want to follow along, a link to this footage will be down below. It's from pexels.com. We're going to transform and fit this to comp. We don't need all of this footage here, so I'm going to go ahead and just grab this little gray bar and shorten that to the parts that I like. Once you have your work area set up, you right click and you trim comp to work area. Okay, so step number one, we want to rotoscope our footage. We want to isolate our subject from our background so that we can start stacking effects onto different parts in our scene. So to do that, it's very simple. You want to double click on your footage here in the bottom left until you are in a layer. So you see in the top, we're now in a layer. If you're still in a composition, double click again until you are in a layer. And then in the top left, you want to grab your Roto brush tool. So over on the right, we can also select the brushes. If you're not seeing that, go up to window and just check brushes on. And this will allow you to kind of raise up the size so we don't want anything too big I think around 35 will be fine and now all you need to do is start drawing green around our subject here so we'll do something like that and you see it says frame rate mismatch set the composition to 24 fps if you ever get that error it's because the frame rate for your composition is different than the frame rate of your actual footage so whatever it says here 24 fps we go up to composition comp settings and we're going to change the frame rate to whatever it says 24 fps click OK. That error should go away. And now we just start refining this edge. All you need to know about rotoscoping, if you hold down Alt, this will turn red and you can cut that purple line away. And you want to get this purple line around your subject as best as you can. With Roto Brush 2 and After Effects, it makes things a lot easier. So this isn't going to be painstaking and it allows us to create some really cool stuff very fast. Another thing we can do in our effect controls, let's bump our feather up a tiny bit. We can fix that a bit later, but we'll put it up to maybe something like 20. So once you have your purple line around your subject, you click the page up and page down keys to move frame by frame. So you see if I do that, we're moving along here. So you want to move along each frame. And if this purple outline here gets messed up in any way, you just want to make an adjustment. So I haven't even made any adjustments here. And you see how well this is actually sticking onto the edge. That's why Rotor Brush 2 is such a powerful tool to use now. Once you've made the adjustments for all the frames that you'd like to mask out, all you need to do is set this little gray bar here in the bottom left. So on the left side, this should always start where this little where this little square is here. So we'll start that there. And then for the right side, we can click and drag that to wherever our cursor is. And again, if you want more space here, just keep going down the frames and making adjustments. So we'll set that there. And then we click this freeze button. So we're gonna go ahead and let After Effects do the rest and isolate and mask that for us. So once your Roto Brush is finished here, to actually see the results, you need to click back to your composition right there in the top left. And now you guys can see how we have our subject here completely masked out. If we toggle transparency, you can see how that works there. Now, if you'd like in the top left, you can change any of these settings. If you need to shift edge a little bit, you can. You can also reduce chatter. You can add more feather if you want. Once you have something you're satisfied with, let's go ahead and start building the entire scene and adding that burning RGB glow effect. So we're going to select this layer here and I'm going to click control D to duplicate it. We're going to rename this bottom layer to background and we're going to rename the top layer to subject. So on our background layer, we're going to select it and in the effect controls up here in the top left, we're going to go ahead and just hide the roto brush for now and that'll bring the scene back to normal. So what we've essentially done is we have a scene where everything is just our normal clip. And then above it, we actually have our isolated layer with no background over top. So now if we add any effects to the top layer, it's only gonna change the subject area and nothing in the background. So let's start setting up our crazy looking effects that we can do here. And again, you can tweak and change this however you'd like. The first thing I like to apply is the find edges effect. So go to your effects and presets and search for find edges, place that on our subject layer. It's a little bit too bright. So we're gonna go ahead and check this invert box in our effect controls. So now all the edges are white and we're gonna be able to change some blending 
thing. So next, let's go ahead and add some color to this. And you have a few options here. The first thing that you can do is you can apply the Colorama effect. So under color correction, you place that there. We talked about that in the Rainbow Glow tutorial where we can use Colorama. If you open up Output Cycle here, you can choose any of these preset palettes to get a good color that you'd like. So if you're looking for a specific color, like glowing red edges, glowing blue edges, or you wanna go full on Hue Cycle or RGB and manipulate the colors, Colorama is great for that. So let's try some other options. We're gonna go ahead and hide that effect for now and we'll come back to it later. Another one you can do if you want just straight up RGB, you can look up the word gradient. And then we're gonna apply four color gradient onto our subject here. And this way you can specifically choose the exact colors that you want, green, blue, and then if you wanna add a fourth color, you can. If not, just move that out of the way. Another cool thing about this, you have these four points here. You can specifically place them where you'd like. So this gives you more control over blending the colors than Colorama, in my opinion, because you have these easier controls. Now you notice that we can't even see our subject anymore. He's covered up by our four color gradient. So to bring him back, you'll see here in the bottom left of four color gradient, you have this blending mode. We're gonna change that to something like color dodge. So here's what that looks like so far. It's a little bit oversaturated, too much in our face with all the fine edges. So the way to blend this together and tone it down a bit is by changing around the main blending mode for the clip. So if you click toggle switches and modes here, you'll be able to see this drop down mode for our subject layer. Try experimenting with this, and this is the way where you can fully blend together your look. If you wanna go more subtle, or if you wanna go all out with how this is being applied. I liked going with a crazy experimental look, so I chose exclusion, and that's what gave me this sort of invert. So you can apply levels, curves, any of those color correcting effects to your layer and then try experimenting with that. You can also take that levels and place it above four color gradient, just so it's affecting it before the actual gradient. One thing to keep note of here, I'm in third quality resolution right now. That's why everything looks so muddled. If we switch this back to full resolution, if your guys' PCs are struggling, you can switch back and forth, but full resolution is gonna give you the actual view of what this is gonna turn out to look. A lot more detailed on full than it really looks if I put it on third, as you can see. So we'll keep that on full, just so you guys can get the full scope of how this is gonna turn out. And let's keep adding our effects. So we want to add some glow here so that all this color can stand out. So you guys can use the normal After Effects glow under stylize. Just place that in your effect controls. And then you're going to want to change your threshold and change your glow radius until you start seeing those colors start to protrude out a bit more. Alternatively, if you guys do have the Sapphire pack, you guys can use Sapphire Glow on your subject here or any other glow plugin. It's really up to you. Now, another thing that I think brings the color out of this a bit more, let's go up to fine edges here. And I like to blend with original a tiny bit. So maybe like 50% and you'll see how that raises the invert. It changes around the colors. And that's what really allows me to get this different sort of view where this different sort of look where you have that invert in there, you have that color in there. And of course, everything is customizable. You can change your blending mode and get infinite different results. Again, if you want something more subtle, maybe change your blending mode and put your edges a bit higher and you'd be able to get something like that. Like I mentioned before, the beauty of doing this is you have full control over all of your layers. So you can keep adding onto this. You can change your background with different effects. You can duplicate this and add things behind your subject because we've already masked it. So for example, if I select my subject layer and click control D, let's change our blending mode here. You could even put it on normal. It's going to change the look because this is on exclusion. But if you move this here, you have a complete other copy that's now behind your subject. So on this back copy, I'm going to go and just delete all of these extra effects that we did. So this should be back to normal here. And what you can do is you can apply anything to this back copy. So I'm going to rename that to clone. Let's try and add to something like turbulent displace, we'll crank up the amount and the size. Now, if you don't want that to bleed through, you could put that back on normal. You could swap the effects. So if you want to have the top normal, the background all crazy, control C to copy these in your effect controls and control V to paste them. And then you could delete these if you want that normal or keep it crazy, it's up to you. But you can see how just changing these different effects and having your scene completely isolated gives you all this freedom to create new different effects for your videos. If you guys are looking for different effects to apply to these, go ahead and just search through my channel. We have hundreds of different videos. Maybe if you don't want turbulent displace, you could try some sort of glitch effect and we just move the clone back layer over a little bit so you could see it over his shoulder. There's another little alteration. So it's up to you guys, just by using what's available to you within Adobe After Effects, using masking and then using some creativity and your knowledge of different things that you can do. And you have your background layer here. So what I did to create this beginning sequence, I added a little bit of chromatic displacement. I think the exact one I used was distort chroma from Sapphire. And what I did was I just bumped the blur lens up a bunch 
and then I keyframed things so that they started normal and then went into this crazy RGB look. So for our blur lens, we'll keyframe here, drag a bit, and we'll crank this value to the left so that everything will get more crunched. And then for the top part here, all you need to do is keyframe the opacity. So select that layer and click T to bring up your opacity, put that down to zero so it goes back to normal and keyframe, and then drag a bit and set that to 100. So it'll start normal here and then fade into this inverted colorful creation that we made. So have fun with this one, guys. Again, if you're looking for anything more to stack onto this, just search through my videos. We're getting close to 500 tutorials, which is insane. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.